starting out in the ClickSense Hub, and this is where I have access to all sorts of different apps uh, that I've been granted permission to. And I can select one of these apps and, and, and start my analysis, or I can use Click Insight Bot. And this is a chat-based interface where I can ask and answer questions uh, based on whatever I'm interested in. So there's uh, loneliness by country, and it brings it back for me, an analysis of that. Uh, and it's in a text chat format. It's a conversational type format. It suggests about what else I might be interested in, and also indicates the app where uh, this information was found. I could jump into that app and I, I get more of a traditional dashboard view inside the app. So inside this uh, view here, I can see uh, loneliness and happiness by, by all the countries that are in my data set, um, as well as the degree of loneliness. And, and it's click, you know, it clicks really interactive. It, it just works. So I can select perhaps the least happy uh, um, respondents and then do an analysis on them. And, and everything is updated based on what I've already selected on. Uh, and interestingly, with, with loneliness itself, if I look at health here, I can see that health uh, decreases and, well, loneliness increases. So the more yellow is, is, is more loneliness, and uh, it's also correlated with poorer health. So health and loneliness are related. Uh, we don't know which one's causal, but, but we know there's related. So perhaps we can look at how people are dealing with their loneliness. Of course, with Click, I can... Uh, interact on other sheets in my selections transfer the associative model ties that all together and there's very rich mapping capabilities but uh, we said you know we want to look at how coping mechanisms so I'm going to go into insight advisor here and in here insights will be automatically surfaced for me based on what I search on like coping mechanism by age or based on the uh, on my context of what selections I've made. So you notice I'm looking at the least happy people in certain ages, uh, and I get a bunch of results that come back, and these are charts that were never existed before. They were created on the fly based on the context of what I, uh, the data I'm looking at in combination with the fields and search that I've done. It's also found some existing charts for me. So here's some existing charts where there's a coping mechanism analysis. So we'll go over and jump over to that sheet, and here I get a really great interface here. So what I'm showing here, these are all of the respondents um, uh, for their coping mechanisms and how they, um, based on what they responded on how frequently they deal with these coping mechanisms. And we're interested in health. So let's look at the, uh, the, the, some of the most uh, destructive things someone could do, like perhaps abuse alcohol. And right away I see that the, the abuse of alcohol um, so everyone who responded to abuse of alcohol also seems to smoke a lot. They don't call for support very often, uh, but they do uh, exercise a, a fair amount um, and also overeat. So perhaps we can guide people to better coping mechanisms uh, when they're feeling lonely, and that will improve their health, which also may make them um, uh, less lonely, as we know there's a correlation between those. So perhaps positive coping mechanisms also can, can uh, beget positive habits, which would result in, in better connections with other people. I can see as well as with ages here, but um, that the there seems to be an increased use of these destructive uh, coping mechanisms in, in younger people. So let's look at how young people compare to old people in terms of loneliness and happiness. So this is a, a comparative analysis here, and um, I can filter on a specific age category. Uh, I can compare seniors and uh, um, uh, younger people. Uh, and what I'm actually doing here is creating on the fly uh, grouping. So what about married young people compared to, uh, say, divorced um, older people? How is their happiness and loneliness um, as well as their health correlated? So the great thing here is because it's click using the associative model, I have the flexibility to move through this however I would like. And I have the flexibility to make any combination of selections and compare it to any other combination of selections. So here I start in my ClickSense app, and I can just load some data. And we have all sorts of various places we could load data from. In this particular challenge from Gartner, we were asked to load some file data. So we'll load that up. One thing you'll notice with this data is it's actually quite challenging in the sense that it's all integers. And then the field names are non-descriptive at all. But uh, nonetheless, Click will be able to recognize this data, and we'll still be able to work with it. So quickly load the data into the associative model. This is uh, bringing all the data together, understanding it all, and uh, then putting it in to the click associative engine. 
uh, and we can generate insights from it right away. So here we are, this is Insight Advisor, and it's going and going to generate charts based on the data, even though this particular data isn't very uh, descriptive. I get a few different charts here, and we'll add one to the sheet. Now we can also add um, information manually. We don't have to just use Insight Box. So for example, if we have a measure, we could create a measure that we'd like for ourselves. We're going to look at the the change in sediment over time, that or change in outlook. We'll create that, and that is immediately ready to use. Just drag that in, and we can color by that. And we can, have, in fact, use it to create a gauge. Uh, and in addition to creating gauges, uh, depending on when we add fields, we can also uh, have that chart convert over to an appropriate chart for the visualizations. And of course, we can change that on through the auto su suggestion if we deem that necessary as well. Now we can add uh, more information, and the, the, the more information we add, the the better Click will get at making suggestions. So we'll just add some lookup tables here real quick. Now with Click, it's really fast to add additional data. You can just uh, auto uh, uh, recognize the fields and just load that data in, and we didn't have to do anything extra with new um, flows in terms of data loads or anything. You just bolt things onto the side, however is needed. Uh, and now when we go back into Insight Advisor, you're going to notice we get new insights. Uh, so the recommendations are going to be different because we've given Click more information about what we're interested in and about the fields. So these insights that come back, they just take a second and the first time we, in we index them, they, they'll come back and they'll be more knowledgeable. So here we have um, some distributions. Uh, we have a nice uh, a distribution plot here that's looking at the average of um, the outlook by age. Um, and we also can type and ask for specific things like balance by country. Uh, now, so there's a balance is, is about whether people find they have work-life balance or not, and we're looking at by country. Now, the interesting thing is here I'm intentionally showing you something that doesn't quite work because I want to show you how Click can continuously learn from what the user's doing. So V balance, it's, it's just a bunch of integers, and it's being recognized as a measure, uh, excuse me, as a dimension, not a measure. Uh, but we can fix that. So I can go in here, and I can say, I want to use it as a measure. So we'll just put it in as a measure. I add that to my sheet, and then when I go back into Insight Advisor, it asks me a really important thing. It says, hey, you did something different. Should I learn from that? We say, yeah, let's learn from that. And there we go. I've created a really quick dashboard uh, for visualizations. And, and what do I need to do to, to make this all um, interactive and line up together? Well, absolutely nothing. Because Click, uh, it's a associative model. Everything is always interactive. Everything is always tied together. And as soon as I make a selection, everything will always update. Uh, if I see some insights that, that are of interest, I can add them in to my snapshots. And then when I, I can create a story about what I uh, what I discovered. So I'll just create a quick one here with this little dashboard. Create a nice little story here. I can resize it. One thing that's interesting with, with the visualizations and click, they're fully responsive. So I, I can change them to different sizes, different aspect ratios, and click will respond to that. We'll put in this chart here. And there we go. And I can add a title in here. Uh, maybe what, what you're probably thinking right now. So there we go. Um, and then my story, um, I can, of course, display it like this. And at any time, I can go back and view whatever I was um, looking at right in context with the selections I had before. So we'll start exactly where we left off with the previous demo, and we're now going to look at data prep. So we'll go over to the data section. And uh, you may have missed it in the previous demo. Um, we already did some data prep, actually, and we combined tables. We associated tables and click. So here, just to see how that works, I can either drag this on top like that, I get a hint from there, or I can just apply the suggestions that was found for me. Uh, but uh, we'll do something a little more complicated. Let's add some data that actually uh, doesn't line up very well. So we'll go here and bring in this file here. 
And the thing about this data that's different is there's no key, single key to associate on. Actually, uh, there's multiple keys. So we're going to have to create a concatenated key. Now, we still get a suggestion because there is two IDs, but um, it's not actually to the uh, employee table is the correct association. It's actually to the, the Wave 8 all countries by region. So we'll drop that on here, and then I can pick the association how, as I want it. So I'm going to do age and gender is how I'm going to bring this together. Age and gender. Uh, and, and another issue arises here, which um, happens not, not, uh, pretty commonly, is the data is actually different. So um, on the left-hand table, we're using male and female, the word um, in the data. But on the right-hand table, it's just an integer, one or a two. So we'll associate that anyway, because in Click, you can do things in any order you want. It's, it's a very, very flexible way. It's not only the way you explore in Click, but actually you can build in any order. And now we can go in and we can edit the, uh, the actual data and the tables themselves. So the first thing we'll do is we'll replace the genders 1 and 2 with male and female. Let's click here. Say male. And then we'll go over here and female. And we replace that. And while we're at it, we could also uh, go over to the the uh, age here, and uh, we'll put the ages in buckets. So we'll just do four buckets. And if I choose to, I can give them arbitrary names. But the interest of this demo, um, I won't bother giving them names. We'll just create those buckets, which will be denoted by the age ranges. And there we have it. I have now a, uh, changed the data itself by um, changing the male and the female. And you can see there it's the key is now um, the appropriate key we need for that concatenated key, as well as I've created new data uh, here in, in my load. So there's a whole lot I could do with Click. It's really easy to do all of these things. Um, there's all sorts of other ways I could be manipulating the data, of course, and there's full scripting behind the scenes. Uh, but I'll, I'll just load this in. Um, and bring that additional information in. And there's a really interesting thing that happens that's unique to click. Uh, when I go into my new sheet or my existing sheet, um, I don't get a different context. I'm actually left with the exact same selections in the exact same context I had before. All the new f fields are available to me. Let's see them here. Uh, but I maintained the data model I already had because I, I just added to that. I didn't have to do a new query or anything like that. And everything is still fully linked up just like it was before. So this is click end printing. In this case, I am in newsstand, which is a portal to go to where I can receive the reports that I want to uh, look at as well as I can subscribe to reports at, based on my preferences. I not only can go to newsstand, I of course can also have uh, reports delivered to me via email and dropped into the folder of my choice. So when I open up a report, uh, this is what a report can look like. So this is a very beautiful pixel perfect report. Uh, it's all data driven uh, and it's even data driven to the point where uh, I get my countries split out by each page and the data and information about those countries changes based on the country. So here Japan is not using unhealthy coping mechanisms, whereas the UK and the US are using unhealthy coping mechanisms. And there's links in here to link back to the underlying ClickSense app. Not only do I get uh, all sorts of data and information, I also have conclusions in here that are data driven as well. So here I have some conclusions about people being happy, about um, also about uh, whether they want the government to, uh, whether they want to work on reducing loneliness. So how are these uh, distributed and created? So uh, here is a example of a uh, of a task to, to distribute the reports. This is the one we used to do the report we just looked at. You select which reports you want. Uh, you also then can split it out by groups and users. You can filter the data, which we didn't do here. Uh, and you select the destination, which we selected newsstand. Uh, reports can be emailed out, as I previously mentioned, and we can even embed entire reports themselves into the text of the email address. And then we trigger the reports based on time or based on specific conditions, uh, such as when the unhealthy coping mechanisms are on the rise.
Reports themselves are created in end printing as well. Uh, so here are a couple of reports uh, that have already been created. And, and when you create a report, uh, you just select a title and uh, you could pick a format. We have a whole bunch of different formats displayed there. Uh, in this case, I was showing you a pixel perfect one. Uh, and, uh, and then you build that report out. Building out the report, you can use uh, the end printing uh, editor. And here's the report that I've shown you, the finished one. And you can see it's entirely data driven. There's no smoke and mirrors here. It's all data driven. Everything is completely data driven all the way down, including the entire conclusions here, which again, look like this once it's, it's produced out. So there you have it. Let's click end printing. Let's click capability to do a full service mode one reporting, traditional reporting, whether you want to distribute it and burst it by email, you can have each individual get the, their unique data or everyone can get the same data depending on your settings. So to show you governance, I'm going to show you how row and column level security works in Click. And it's actually really simple. It's completely data driven. So you, you simply create a table that defines uh, who has access to what, and then it will drive through the entire associative model. So here I have the most simplest way to, uh, to, to do this, which is I'm using just a simple text table here. So, um, and of course I'm using this it's just purely for demonstration purposes. However, uh, you could use any sort of table. You could use a, a security table. You can use a table in a database. So we'll just save that change here to our table and reload the data. And once the data reloads, you'll see that uh, now only the US data is available to this user. So that's as simple as the way it works in, in Click. It's row and column level. Governance is a whole lot more than just row and column level security. It's also about publishing content and sharing it with other users. So if I have an app here that I want to share the content out on, um, I can publish it directly from the hub and we'll just do that right now. And when I publish it out, I can choose uh, where I'm going to publish to. I'll publish it to the Every everyone stream. And I also can choose to publish it out to a different deployment. So I'm going to publish it out to my multi-tenanted deployment on Click Cloud Services as well. And I just assign who has access and where we're going to put it, and we'll apply that right now. So now that that publish has occurred, some interesting things will happen with the app that we were working on before. So we'll just go back to that app, we'll refresh it, and you're going to see that when I edit this app, I now no longer have the ability to change the underlying base level information. If I go into edit mode, it says, I, I, this is a published app. You cannot change this for everybody else. You have to duplicate it. And when I duplicate the sheet, I now have my version of the sheet and I can change that however I would like, including using master items. So dimensions, measures, and visualizations that were left behind for me by the developer that I can just bring in. And of course I can also create things from scratch. Uh, this sheet that I've just created is now only viewable to me but I can publish it out to uh, for other people to view. And there we go, it's now shared to, to the community and they understand which items are in the base sheets and which items are in the ad hoc sheets that have been shared and published by other people. So that gives a great level of governance and ad hoc capabilities. And finally, I'm gonna go over to the Click Cloud Services Hub. This is the multi-tenanted hub that's uh, that is available and this has now been deployed not only to my on-premise deployment but you can see that the app has also been deployed out to uh, to the cloud services deployment as well so that makes it that's true multi-cloud capabilities that allows governance across multiple deployments and actually across multiple infrastructure types so there we have row and column level security abilities to publish to wherever you need to abilities to change apps and then share those changes without affecting the underlying uh, app and also abilities to interact not only on a single tenanted uh, local environment, but also control multiple deployments in a multi-cloud manner. We've continued to enhance Insight Advisor and with the April 2019 release, it will, it will also include associative insights. So let me show you how that works. So here I found some interesting thing in my data where my revenue is dropping. So I'll focus in on that. Now, I may be tempted to go and look at uh, data points within the data set that I selected. So what I filtered on, but the reality is I want to look at the whole data set and understand how this data is different 
or uh, from the rest of the data set. So what's unique about this? How are the associations in the data different? And I've now just used associative insights and it's gone out and it's looking at the whole data set because of clicks associative capabilities. And it came back and found that in my customers, uh, 39 of my customers are not uh, purchasing products and that re represents almost a million dollars of, of possible margin. So I can see who those customers are here and I can also say select excluded to select on those specific customers and change my context. I now can continue the iteration of looking at this information to try to learn more. So I'll go into uh, visual insights as part of Insight Advisor and uh, let's look at the variance by product group. And when I look at the variance by product group, I can now see how these customers' uh, sales have changed by product group and understand that. And Visual Insights generates for me some new charts that have never existed before. And I can see that these three product groups have a really large variance. So now I'm focused in on these customers who are who have declining sales and the specific products that they're selling that they are not buying. Uh, uh, now I'm going to go back and use associative insights again to understand what's unique about this data set in the context of the larger data set. And I can see that almost over half of my sales reps are not selling those products. So now I've understood, being able to see the whole context of the data, what uh, is happening in my data and what is not happening in the data in the context of my selections because I have combination of the cognitive capabilities of click and the associative capabilities of click working together and only click can do that because we're not query based.